Well, that is an invitation to Lent. Thank you, Kim. We are gathered here this Sunday morning um, to open our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength to the living God, to remember that no matter what has happened or what has failed to happen, that there is a God who is working to bring forth life from death and wholeness from brokenness. So to all of you who brave that snow and slush and ice mix and got here, welcome. To all of you who are safely tucked in at home, welcome. It's good to be gathered as we celebrate and, and begin this journey of Lent together. As we are coming into this space, um, remember that the offering plate and prayer requests are right there at the entrance um, of the sanctuary in the back. So if you have a prayer request that you would like to lift up later on in the service, please write that down. And then thank you for all the gifts that are given and have been given to make our ministry possible. For those of you who are online, if you have a prayer that you would like to share, please put that in the comment section um, of, of the Facebook. Facebook live stream, or you can text me at 612-449-9405, 612-449-9405. So let's take a deep breath, settle in to space together, and rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. From Deuteronomy 25. My father was a starving Aramean. He went down to Egypt living as an immigrant there with few family members, but that is where he became a great nation, mighty and numerous. The And the Lord heard our call. God saw our misery, our trouble, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, with awesome power and with signs and wonders. The Lord brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land full of milk and honey. So now we are bringing the early Would you join me? God, our refuge, save us from the hunter's trap. Protect us in your faithfulness. Shelter us under your wings. May we see your salvation and know you are with us. Amen.
reading from Luke chapter 4. Jesus returned from the Jordan River, full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward, Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, It's written, People won't live only by bread. Next, the devil led him to a high place and showed him a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me, and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, for it's written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, it's been said, don't test the Lord your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. For the beginning of Lent, we are going back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry, that season of preparation. And so as we prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection, um, we are getting ready to relive the heart of our faith in Holy Week, just as Jesus spent his own season of preparation, that same 40 days, um, for ministry in the wilderness. And that was immediately following his baptism. And because of this time, because of the temptations that he went through, he knew who he was and what his ministry would be and not be. If you remember him standing in front of the synagogue and quoting Isaiah 61. So for us, and knowing who we are and who we are not, and what we are called to be in ministry, and maybe what is not our call, we'll spend this Lent looking at our own temptations. Because as Christians, and honestly as decent human beings, we want transformation, not just for us, but for the world. And yet, as much as we truly want transformation, we also want things that make transformation difficult and even impossible to happen. And so today, we start with the one that we've been talking about this whole pandemic, control. Our desire for control is natural. It is the power to order and thus stabilize our lives. It is the power to ensure our protection and our well-being and stability and well-being are good things to work for. And even good things can tempt us away from keeping our focus on God or can tempt us to make Jesus into a more comfortable controllable savior. Walter Brueggemann, a Hebrew Bible scholar, captures this in a prayer that he has written. We'll be using it this Lenten journey of examining our wants and our desires. Are they all aligned and working to make transformation possible? Or are there some that are working outside of our awareness that although we truly want and work for transformation, we're also unconsciously sabotaging its chances? Brigham's prayer is entitled, Not the God We Would Have Chosen. If you'll bring that first part of the prayer up, Ron and John. God, you are not the God we would have chosen. We would prefer you were stable and reliable. We would prefer you were predictable and always the same toward us. There are times we would like to take the hammer of doctrine and the nails of piety and nail your feet to the floor and have you stay in one place. 
Here's the thing about the temptations that Jesus, is, that Jesus faced. They are all good things. Take the first one. Turn these stones to bread. Israel is in a famine, under occupation, where all taxes and resources go to Rome. People are starving and living in a landscape littered with stones. Feeding people is a good thing. The second temptation, take all the power of the world and use it for good. Rule with justice. No more unjust invasions. No more crimes against humanity. Resources distributed to all with equity. Society ordered to care for all. These aren't just good things. This is what we dream of when we pray, thy will be done. The third temptation, clearly announce yourself as the Messiah. No more doubt, no more anguish, just crystal clear communication. Hallelujah. See and believe. Does anybody not have trouble with this? Am I the only one? (laughs) No more of this faith being hope for things unseen business. Like it's clear, it's in front of us. Plus added bonus, churches actually start being what churches are supposed to be. Everything's lined up and obvious. Because friends, we are not the only ones in our time who have struggled for true faithfulness. The temple priests all the way back in Jesus' time were doing more to collude with the Roman Empire than to care for Israel's poor and suffering. Reform is a good thing. It's kind of why we Methodists exist in the first place. So why did Jesus say no? Because he knew who he was. Remember that baptism. Jesus is God's son, God's beloved, with whom God is well pleased. Jesus knew who was in control, God. And Jesus' time in the wilderness is what living with God in control looks like. Let's go back to those three temptations. Jesus responds to the devil from Deuteronomy 8, verse 13. One does not live by bread alone. Bread is good, and it is not enough. We are collecting food here and partnering with Open Door every month. That is good and needed and not enough. Because it doesn't answer why there is hunger in the first place. Because it doesn't stop the brokenness, the injustice that is causing this hunger, this need. Because although it meets survival needs, it does not alone bring wholeness. You know this. That's why Ruby's Pantry sent people who were starting up new pantries to you all, to Glendale. Because from Mary's clipboard and greeting people by name to Sandy's crafts and here to all of the volunteers with all the carts helping every step of the way, you built relationship in. You fed hunger and loneliness. Hidden Valley Elementary knows this. That's why they've asked us for mentors and programs that build relationships and community, gifts that might transform the trauma their students are dealing with. One does not live by bread alone. For the second temptation, Jesus quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. God is not here to play the best game our rules, our governments, and kingdoms allow. God is not here to simply put better players into the game, but to change the game entirely. In other words, God is not here to be bound by the limits of our control. God is here to break our cycles of violence and invasion and domination and control. God is here to make what is impossible for us possible. So we surrender to the Lord our God in worship and live our lives serving only him. And lastly, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. 
Do not put the Lord your God to the test. God is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the universe, always at work for our joy to be made complete and our life to be made abundant. If we are having trouble, perhaps instead of trying to goad God into changing God's communication style, we first look at ourselves and how well we're listening. Think of how good kids are at not hearing what they don't want to, and then going to another parent or adult or anyone else to get the answer they want to hear. Are we spending our faith lives trying to show how we deserve to get what we want from God? Think of all the arguments all the kids put together. Or are we spending our faith lives letting God transform us? One means we are giving as much as we can to Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. The other means we are constantly demanding miracles because of how much Holy Spirit has to work in spite of us to be with us. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The temptations are all good things that are not enough. And here's the even funnier thing about all of this. Jesus did feed the hungry. And his preaching and teaching and ministry about the kingdom of God was so political it got him betrayed and arrested. And he did go to the cross in confidence that God was in control and would have a different ending for him would not let permanent harm come to him. All those good things that were temptations then became core pieces of Jesus' ministry later. What do we do with that? I take comfort in this. It's not wrong to want these good things or to work for them. But if we try to control the timing or limit the layers of meaning and depth in each of these calls, then we have bound God. We have taken the nails of our preferences and the hammer of our control and created a more comfortable savior. But that binding also means we have limited the power God can give us and others for the transformation of the world. And so we come back to the meme that the confirmation class has been talking about, about how we give our small stuffed animal bear over to God, even though we don't know that God is an even bigger, cooler one waiting just behind him to give us, if we can just give this one over. So as we begin this Lent, as you are deciding what your practices will be for this Lent, think about what preferences you need, what little bear you're grasping that you need to practice giving up and surrendering this season. What control do you need to give to God so that the transformation we pray for can become possible? Blessings. Lair, if you'll meet me at the communion table, the good news is that we do not do this hard work alone. That even as God asks us to surrender that teddy bear, God's with us to help us be able to do so. And so we begin this journey being fed and helped to be able to give over the control that God is asking for us. And now we'll go to the communion table.
as you are at the altar, would you just stay there and lift that plate up for a moment as we pray over it? Because our prayer for the offering that we have given is our prayer for us and for all of Lent. Would you join me? Lord, work through us and our gifts so that what comes to us as seed goes forth as flower, and what comes to us as flower goes forth as fruit. Amen. Thank you, Larry. This is not easy work. But it is work that makes the impossible possible, that makes transformation and wholeness possible. And we're going to go to a time of prayer right now and see all of the different ways that transformation is needed in the lives of those we love in our community and in our world. And so these prayers will call us to God's invitation to observe a holy Lent, to do everything that we can to surrender our control to God's so that bigger teddy bear can get here sooner for more people. Would you join me in prayer? God, we look to you, Ash's friend, John, and his family, for his father passed away this morning. And God, we ask that you welcome Ash's friend, John, and your love in whatever way will bring John life with you and wholeness with the community of saints and John self. We ask, oh, nope, for his father. We ask that you wait on welcoming John for a little while, and that it be his father that you welcome and surround, um, but that for John you might hold him in your love as well in a way that John can sense your presence and your life and hope and for Ash and John's family and community as well. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we join Gail Pollard in um, her gratitude for all of the prayers that brought her through um, her anxiety. They, were, they did not have to place in a stint. There was actually no blockage when they went in. And so, God, we give you prayers um, for a fast recovery for Gail and for a chance to get healthy without having to go through surgery. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We also pray for Denny's brother Ralph, um, Denny's brother-in-law Ralph, prayers for healing um, for him and for the doctors to determine what's wrong. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Prayers for Gail's friend Craig. Um, the test results that we were praying over last week have come back and they are cancerous. God, we ask that you hold Craig and Craig's soul tight, that you breathe your breath into this anxiety and into this moment for him and for his family and community, that you might be the great physician that brings healing and that makes a way possible. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we join Linda Murphy in excitement and joy for the marriage of Desiree and Trey and for blessing for them and for much love and happiness. God, we ask that you pour out your abundance in this new beginning and wrap these new events up in your love as they celebrate the love that they have found in each other. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We join Rick and Kay um, for prayers of guidance and wisdom for Michael as he decides which field of medicine to pursue. God, may you be with him that he might fall, find his call to ministry as clearly as Jesus found his in his time with you. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we join in prayers um, for our members who are unable to be with us in worship, Jim and Susan Ross, June Haas, Dwayne Meyer, and June Haas. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We lift continued prayers of healing for Steve Peterson, 
John Scarbalis, Lucy Schulteis, Lily Fett, Sally Rutherford, Raymond Olson, Sena Bruce. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we continue to lift to you Mona and Jim's family as they continue to care uh, for Mona's brothers, um, Brian's estate, that all might be able to happen as smoothly as possible in, in the amount of work that is before them. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we join um, Betty and Randy Blazer in prayers for Betty's friend, Radine, um, who had open heart surgery this past week. So may Radine heal and cover quickly and have patience in the midst of that recovery. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. John, Ron, are there any others? And then we also lift together in prayer the message that someone has left for us at the prayer station. God love you. And share in that joy and in that moment of kindness and reminding as we come to this table to remember the love of God that makes this journey possible. And so, God, we remember. We remember your son, Jesus. We remember his commitment to go through a night of betrayal and abandonment, of torture and of death, so that transformation might be possible for all people in all times and in all places. And every single time we sit at a meal, every single time we eat the bread that we need to live, we also remember that we need God's love and presence and guidance, that we need God to be in control providing for us. And so we remember how you showed us this providing as Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat bread, whenever you sit to share a meal, remember me. Likewise, after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this table, our brokenness is made whole and our sins are forgiven. At this table, with God in control and God providing, that although it's still not easy and fair, we are able to taste wholeness in the midst of the storm. And so, God, for all of those around this world, here in the Ukraine and everywhere, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here in person and in spirit and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with you, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For it is only in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the support and the accountability of your Holy Church, that this journey that this hope of transformation is possible now and always. Amen. Ushers, would you pass the bread and the cup out?
there's a basket in the back for when your cups are empty and need to be thrown out. And may we practice the impossibility of transformation right now in getting these things open to be able to share in God's love. to receive God's love and we have brought food so that those who are not gathered at this table will also know that love and God's providing. Thank you for meeting not just survival needs but needs that lead and bring to the wholeness of God's peace within us. As we remember a Savior who is broken, who is whole, but it chose to become broken so that we who are broken might be made whole. Take and eat. And remember a Savior who is full, but who chose to empty himself so that we who are emptied may be filled. This is God in control providing for us so that even when life is not easy or fair, there still is wholeness. in this wholeness. Let us lift our hearts and our voices with siblings in Christ all around the world. The community that have gone before us are with us now and will follow after us as we pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Enjoy body or spirit for our closing
Lord, and thank you to everyone who signed in your presence with our greeter um, and visitors. Y'all, we had seven on Ash Wednesday. <laughs> it was really exciting. Um, there's contact information sheets so that we can provide a fuller welcome to you later on in the week. All right, so Wednesdays in Lent coming up, March 9th through April 6th. At 6 o'clock, we'll gather for an intergenerational Lenten activity um, and prayer. And then at 6.30, we'll have our soup supper. And at 7.15, choir will be rehearsing. This Wednesday is also our open door food distribution, and so if you're interested in helping out, volunteers are needed from 1.45 to 3.30 on Wednesday. And Sandy, if you want to wave, let Sandy know if you're able to help and have any questions. And then again, we are collecting food up here at the altar all throughout Lent, so bring um, food on Wednesdays or on Sundays um, for the Scott Carver Dakota Cap Agency, um, and it's their Put a Cap on Hunger food share, and that will again happen all through Lent. Um, if you have financial donations, please write checks to Glendale, and then put Cap Food Drive in the memo line, and all donations will be delivered to Cap after April 10th. And then drum roll, we get to finally go on a mission trip again. <laughs> and so we have dates for you. We are picking up where we left off in 2020 with the Flanner House in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we will be going this year in 2022 from July 17th to July 23rd. That's a Sunday to a Saturday. And so if you're interested, please email Victoria Fett. Um, and we are going with the Spirit of Life Presbyterian Church again. And anyone going into sixth grade and older is welcome. This will be an intergenerational trip. And we're still working out the price, but we'll get that to you. And don't let that be a barrier. Our learning focus will again be on how God and community can do something about the economic impacts of racism. So any questions, see Victoria or myself. And let's finally jump back into something thing that um, fills us with such joy and can transform us and the world around us. And then lastly, thank you for everyone who assisted in worship today. And we have a March worship sign-up sheet out in the back. And then thank you for everyone who's responded to the survey monkey that's gone out to see if we can add any new interested folks to our list. That's it for me. Any other announcements? Yes. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, more to keep it short rather than to do my usual. I'm here this morning from the SBRC. Folks online, these instructions are going to be for you too. Take out your phones. You don't hear that every day in church. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> go to April 6th. Pay no attention to what was on the overhead before about April 6th. It's one month from today. Take a look at April 6th on your phone. Raise your hand if you're doing anything that evening. Okay, well, <sighs> lower your hand if it says soup supper on your phone, because that's good. This is your save the date announcement for after soup supper that evening. Now, we all talk about choir practice and kids' activities this week. Uh, next Sunday, when there hasn't been communion and, you know, time taking up things, I'll be back to tell you more. If your curiosity is getting the best of you, think of these two things this week. One, we've been unable to do this for two years. Just about like everything else, right? And second, go to your Bible, Matthew 18, verses 8 to 20. See you next week. Well, with that teaser, <laughs> would you rise?
in body or in spirit as we go forward. And thank you, Jasmine and Rico. We come to take the light and to take the centering that we have gained in this moment out into this week, knowing that God is in control and that God is providing for us so that even if this week is hard or not fair, there will still be God with us making wholeness possible because of the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you.